Jessica. I am Alicia. We have Laura, who is the manager of our customer success and support teams, and Allison, our um, product manager. And let me get back to my screen here. Um, so what does Lead Sherpa do? We empower real estate professionals to succeed by creating the most powerful real estate focused tech suite in the world. And um, we can only do that with help from our our customers. And so we really appreciate you guys taking the time to be here and, and help us to, to get to this goal. Um, and as well, we are here to help show you how you can get the most out of Lead Sherpa. So feel free to ask any questions during the um, webinar. There is the Q&A um, button at the bottom of your screen. So um, that will be monitored. So go ahead and ask questions as they come up. And then we'll have a kind of a Q&A at the end as well. So we're going to talk about direct mail. Some of the things we'll cover is what is direct mail? Um, why do direct mail campaigns work? The benefits of Lead Sherpa direct mail campaigns how to use direct mail, and best practices and costs of direct mail. So what is direct mail? Um, I'm sure that all of you probably have either heard about it or know what it is, but it's a um, direct marketing platform that uh, sends postcards to your prospect's mailbox. So when used in conjunction with your SMS campaigns, it can really make your company stand out um, head and shoulders above your competitors. Um, why do direct mail campaigns work? Multiple reasons. Um, it is interactive. So your prospects will physically handle a piece of mail and look at it um, before deciding to, to keep it or, or move on. Um, so it's, it's tangible, it's in their hands and they, they'll look at it for sure. Um, there's not much competition with direct mail anymore. People are moving more to a digital platform because of the ease. Um, the ease of use, but sending a postcard will get you more noticed because most people aren't doing it anymore. And therefore it does make it memorable. Um, I mean, I, I know that I love like receiving mail. Um, there is a lot of junk mail I get, but seeing a postcard, I am gonna look at it and, um, and getting those, those direct mail um, campaigns can spark nostalgia and, and create a more emotional response. Um, you can have a bigger reach. You can reach all of the customers that can't be reached through those digital marketing alone, um, through the SMS. And it sticks around. So they might keep it on their counter, put it on their desk, um, not really think about it, but it, it sparks that idea in the back of their head that they might be looking to sell their house. And they can pick it up you know, a few months down the road and, and decide when the time is right for them and give you guys a call. So some of the benefits of using direct mail through Lead Sherpa, um, you can push your direct mail campaign directly from PropStack. So you can stack your list and only send that direct mail to, to prospects that are most likely to sell. And we'll get into that a little bit further in the um, webinar here on, on how to hone in on those. Um, you do not need to skip trace through Lead Sherpa to send direct mail. So it is recommended, so you can get the golden address and the owner name if you don't already have it. Um, and then you can also get the phone number um, to follow up with a text or call if you do skip trace through us, but it is not um, required. Just on that one, Alicia, not to yeah. jump nope. in too Please. often, uh, but some people don't know what a golden address is. They see it on skip trace. They don't know what it is. So the real value of the golden address with direct mail is this is the most updated mailing address the system can find. So you're uploading, uh, say, 123 Main, Main Street to send a piece of direct mail to. But if you skip trace, we'll say, actually, yeah, they used to live there, but now they live here. And not everybody has that information unless they're using Lead Sherpa skip trace. Lots of people are just getting their data from the same place that you might be getting it from, and they have that old address as well. So you're actually getting ahead of your competitors by using the golden address, because that's actually where the owner currently lives now. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Allison. And speaking of, of golden address, um, once you have that golden address, that is used as the default for mailing out these cards. So um, if there is no mailing address, 
we will use the property address, but um, it'll take all that manual work off of you searching for the address for that prospect. Um, handwritten fonts. So these postcards will seem very personalized and like you have handwritten it just for them. Um, but you don't need to spend hours upon hours writing them because we will handle it for you. Google Street View template, and I'll, I'll show you guys the templates later. That Google Street View template is pretty cool because it actually puts the picture of the property on the postcard um, so they actually see their own um, house on the postcard, making it super personalized for them. It's super easy to set up a direct mail campaign. You just enter a few key fields and then we take if we do everything else for you. Um, you select your template, put in the information and we handle all of, all of um, the rest of the work. You do have the ability to edit. So if you do wanna change um, something who you're sending to or, or um, anything within that, that um, campaign, you can edit up to 72 hours before the drop date. So, um, so if you do make a change, um, nothing will be charged to the account until 48 hours prior to the drop date so that it will give you time to, um, to edit if you need to. And we only use first class postage only. So those postcards will get first class treatment with that first class postage, um, getting it sent to the right people there. Um, how to use direct mail. So super simple, basic overview. You create a direct mail campaign. And again, by either using um, Skip Trace or PropStack to help you get the necessary information, you fill out the form in Lead Sherpa, just a couple of fields to fill out. You select your postcard. Um, I'll show you the, the five templates that we have right now for you guys. Um, add your payment info and the drop date. Um, you let us know when you want them to go out and um, then you sit back and relax and we take care of everything else for you. Um, best practices with direct mail. So initially you should still be sending out your SMS campaigns. Um, that's gonna, that's gonna you know, reach out to that majority of people. And then from there, you can segment them out to see who to send direct mail um, postcards to. So um, with your direct, uh, your initial SMS campaign, it is still super important to create that intriguing message so that they will respond back to those messages. But if they don't, that's when you go into PropStack and you create a new list of either your DNCs or your non-responders or both and create that secondary list to send that direct mail campaign to. And then you just correct, um, create your direct mail campaign um, by following the steps that we talked about before. This can be done directly from PropStack or it can be done um, by creating a new campaign. And Alicia, to add just a little bit of color there, the reason why this is best practice, of course, if you don't, if you're only using direct mail with us and not SMS, you don't have the option for that SMS campaign, though you can easily sign up and, and for SMS and utilize it. Um, but the whole idea behind this is not putting all of your eggs in one basket. There's gonna be people who will reply to an SMS. There's gonna be people who will reply to, to, to direct mail to a postcard and not the other item. So if it's maybe an older uh, couple or person, they might you know respond to a postcard they might not quite get the concept of SMS or feel like maybe they're getting scammed or something, but a postcard, they might be more intrigued, whereas the younger crowd might respond well to an SMS or this combination of both, you know, send your SMS, follow up with a direct mail or even the other way around, send direct mail. It's a little bit more expensive this way. And that's why best practice is to do the SMS first, but you can also send direct mail and follow up with an SMS and say, hey, I sent you a piece of mail the other day. Uh, I'd like to, you know, carry or um, follow up on the conversation about the potential of you selling your home. So really, instead of just using one way, you're just going to generate more leads by doing both or a combination of both. Right. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to go through our, our templates that we have now. 
This first one is is called Blessed. You can see it's it all looks handwritten. Um, it says blessings, um, Eric, which is why it's called Blessed. It is just on a on a yellow um, postcard, but everything is all handwritten on this one. Uh, the next one is Doodle. So again, everything's handwritten, but it does have a few doodles on there to make it look a little more like you, um, you know, drawing attention to the verbiage in there. Um, Orange Crush is kind of a fun one. It's kind of a busy one. The back of the card is um, is typed um, with the signature at the bottom, though a handwritten signature at the bottom. But the front of it um, looks like you took the time to to write every um, address individually. And on this one, well, on any of them uh, as well. All of this copy is set for you. You don't have to think about what I want to type out. Again, all we need is the prospect information and who it's really going to come from and what that callback number is. And we just put all of that into the copy. So you don't have to write all this out, but we just pop in the address, uh, who it's for, who it's from, and the phone number for them to call back at. The rest of it is all done for you. Um, the next one is a standard yellow. Um, again, same kind of as the blessing without the um, blessings um, response there. Um, just the, the plain yellow uh, standard postcard there. And then one of our favorites is the one with the Google view where it does have the picture of the house um, from Google. And again, everything is um, handwritten for you. We do often get most people saying that this one gets their, their best response, right? Sure, sure. Um, so you guys are all thinking, I know this is amazing. It's great. How much does direct mail cost? Um, so it is 48 cents per postcard. Included in this price is your campaign management, postcard printing itself, sending with the first class postage, there is no heavy lifting from you and you will get peace of mind knowing that you can send out hundreds or thousands of postcards without really lifting a finger. And that is all that I have for direct mail. So make sure you guys are putting in your questions um, either in the chat or the Q&A. And I'm gonna punt it over to Allison to talk about updates and features. Yeah, so Alicia, you'll keep sharing your screen here. Mm -hmm. I don't have the slide show up, but if you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So just a couple of things that have been released recently. Uh, one is our 10 DLC registration form. So some of the companies are actually still getting registered on the back end. However, we've collected your information so that everything is 10 DLC compliant, um, which means, you know, initially, we thought this would have some big restrictions on SMS, but it turns out that this is actually what's going to allow SMS to uh, live a lot longer in just a more regulated way. So as long as you're registered, you should definitely get registered if you keep on, you know, snoozing that uh, form, fill out your information, make sure your information is very accurate. Uh, they can only verify you for further SMS use if your EIN matches your physical uh, address and your legal company name. So put really valid information in there so they can verify you and then you can continue sending SMS. The other thing is the prop stack record selector. So I will share actually my screen for this one. Um, what slide am I on? Here we are, share. So this uh, was released, I think, two weeks ago or so uh, before when you came to PropStack, it really was an all or nothing selection. But now you can select, you know, a, a certain amount of records at a time. So if I want to select 600, then I can do that. Uh, and the reason that this is really helpful is especially for those uh, of us that want to use direct mail or want to use SMS but before it was a select all or select one at a time approach. And if we have uh, 582,000 records here. I don't necessarily want to send all of my uh, messages or postcards to all of those records. Of course, we can filter things down, but sometimes even after we've filtered what we want to filter to, there's more records than we have an upload limit left for for SMS or that we have a budget for for direct mail. So now we can select and say, okay, just select 75 records and then take action on those and push them to direct mail or SMS. 
Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now there. And then Alicia, could you reshare uh, the slides, please? Yep. And if anybody does have questions, again, just pop them in the chat. Ryan, I saw you had some. We'll get to them uh, in just a minute here. So let's go to the next slide. So what's coming up? We are working behind the scenes very hard on some very exciting things. We've been working on these for a while because they're quite large, hefty updates. Uh, so one is a new way to manage your warm and cold leads. We've been working on this for a while, but again, it's a huge update that's really gonna help you stay on top of the people who say, mm, not interested right now, but contacted me again in a few months. So a management system for all of those kind of leads is coming, it's a big update, very exciting. The really exciting one as well, they're both very exciting, are, is the optimization and rework of SMS campaigns. We are working on getting away from Twilio um, and you know, restructuring and re-optimizing SMS completely, building the back end of SMS really from the ground up, not too many changes on the front end, uh, but huge, huge improvements that solve most of people's frustrations uh, on the back end and, and how all of the actual messaging itself works uh, and numbers and all of that. So really big updates coming. They will be live within the next couple of months. So the next time we do a webinar, these might stay the same because they're, really big things to overhaul, uh, but we're really excited for what's on the way. Yes, for sure. Um, as always, if you guys have any technical questions, reach out to our support team. Um, you can email support at Lead Sherpa, but you can also um, reach out through the app itself by clicking on the, um, on the little question mark icon and it'll take you to our support page as well. So now we will answer any questions that have been submitted. Um, Laura, I will send it to you. Yeah, it looks like um, Ryan had put one in the chat earlier. Um, I believe probably referring to SMS, but we'll want to clarify. Um, he's asking about the super high carrier skipped rate um, and issues with bouncing 80% of messages um, with uh, pulling off of MLS. I don't know. I, we might have to look at your individual account um, in order to fully answer that because um, it's going to be based off of some different factors there. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, the best thing we could probably do is have uh, someone in support look at your account. I'll have them contact you um, and follow up with you. Unless like, right. Allison or Alicia, you have any Generally. Yeah, just a little additional tidbit because the first question is specifically regarding a high carrier skipped rate. Uh, so if you're using Lead Sherpa phone numbers and not Twilio numbers, there uh, is a restriction on Verizon numbers, Verizon prospects, so you can't send to Verizon. Um, and that is something that will be solved by what I had just mentioned. So this complete rework and optimization of the back end of SMS will no longer have a carrier skip. That's the biggest reason we're doing this or one of, there's a few reasons we're doing it, um, but that will be solved with this update that's coming. However, we still will reach out to you specifically about your account because if you're getting 80% skipped messages, then that's higher than what just a Verizon block would be. You might be getting skipped for some other reasons, or perhaps you created a campaign based off of skips that are mainly Verizon numbers, which would make it be higher. So we'll give you some uh, more one-on-one -on -one assistance from support um, and, and make sure that you get your question fully answered. Yeah, 